and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome those who are watching this TV program to stay with us and to be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. 1 Corinthians, the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. My friend, this morning, if you haven't been saved by the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that God saves those that believe through the preaching of God's Word. Our attitude towards the preaching of God's Word will make the difference whether we obey the gospel or not, whether we are able to come to the Lord and Him save us from our sins. That's why Jesus came to the earth in Matthew chapter 1 to save His people from their sins. And our attitude towards the preaching of God's Word makes the difference whether you and I do that or not. And that kind of helps us to uh, take a second look at when the preacher's preaching. You see, I know before I become a Christian, I didn't know one preaching to me. I know I didn't want to go and listen to a preacher preach. But I know what I know now. My attitude has changed. I love to hear preaching, especially preaching that stands firmly upon God's Word. Especially preaching that excites me knowing that I don't have to go to hell, but I can make heaven my home. Especially preaching that comes from God's Word that shows me just exactly how that I can become a Christian. And I don't have to guess. I don't have to have men tell me different ways. Especially when there's preaching from God's Word that tells me how to live my life as a Christian. You see, I don't want to be dependent upon myself. Me guiding myself how to, become, how to become a Christian, how to live the Christian life. I don't want to be dependent upon myself when I stand before the Almighty God one day, and we will. And it was my own thoughts, my own ways, my own righteousness. And hear those words that would come out of the mouth of Jesus, the King, depart from me, for I never knew you. Yeah, I like to hear good preaching especially when it steps on my toes. You know when I get my, step, my toes stepped on? I kind of get a little red around the neck and it starts moving up. I know he's talking about me. And my toes are getting stepped on. It might be a sin in my life, something I should be doing or something I'm not doing and should be. Yeah, I like to hear preaching where uh, I learn something that I'm not doing or I learn to not do something that God doesn't want me to do. I like to hear preaching from good preachers who believe that the Word of God is all that we need. The Word of God is the inherent uh, truth, and there is no other. God says, and, and Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1, that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. I like to hear preachers preach the truth, whether I like it or not. I like to hear preachers uh, preach how I ought to live. And I think that is a problem today in the world and in the Lord's church. We don't like preachers telling us how to live. Well, you know, if he's preached from the Bible, the preacher's not telling you how to live. God is. God's doing the talking there. And who would one of us would be willing to Look, look up into heaven and say, God, you quit telling me how to live. Any of us were willing to do that? Not me, buddy. I'm not going to do that. But you know we do that when the Word of God's being preached and taught, or even when you're just reading and studying it. And we say, well, I'm not going to do that. Now, you might not say I'm not going to do that, but our actions bear out that we're not doing it. You see? And so, I like preaching when it tells me what I need to be doing as a Christian. You know, when, when the preacher says, the Bible says, Jay, you not, shouldn't be doing that. I like it. You see? As well as I like the preacher said, Jay, that's a great job. You see? Because the Bible says so. 
Yeah, the Word of God is written for us. Instructions. How to live the Christian life here. And how to let God or let Jesus lead us from this life into the next. Yeah, I, uh, I want to know all, all I can about the Word of God. I want to study it so much that I can figure out everything that it's saying. Now, I may not, uh, may not get the job done, but I want to work toward that effort, you see. Knowing all I can about what's contained in this book. Because I tell you this morning, when we die, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and 2 Corinthians says that. And we're going to be judged according to everything that's in this book. You are going, and I are going to be judged. And I want to know what it is that God's going to judge me with. You see, God isn't going to have us stand before Him one day and Him start judging us. Well, He's given us the time right now to figure it out what we're going to be judged by. You see, I've got time to make sure that when I stand before the Lord, when He starts judging me, it's going to be a good judgment. Okay? It's going to be a good one. And that's what He offers to all mankind. Jesus died for all mankind. I'm telling you, Jesus died for every man and woman that was ever born or ever will be born. He died for everyone. Jesus chose 12 men, and there were other apostles. He chose apostles, and these men wrote the New Testament, but they were directed by the Holy Spirit of God. They were directed by the hand of God. If you would, go with me to... Second Peter... In chapter 1, and starting with verse 20. Knowing this, first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation or of any private origin. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as, here's the key point, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit told the apostles what to write. God told the apostles what to write. They didn't write these things on their own. In Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, and starting in verse 1, that Jesus was led out into the wilderness to be tempted of the tempter or the devil. And he was a hungered for 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil came along. And he says, Command these stones to be made, made bread so that you can eat and take care of your hunger. But Jesus said, It is written. It is written in the book of God by the hands of men who were inspired or moved by the Holy Spirit it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the Bible. The Bible is the mouth of God to, the life, to life here in this, on, in, on this earth. Okay, The Bible is the mouth of God. God is going to speak to you and me audibly. That's where He has left us with the New Testament to speak to us through the Word of God. Jesus is called the Word or the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says that in, in time past, God spoke to us through the prophets. You know, Elijah and etc., 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 Moses. But in these last days, has spoken to us through His Son, Jesus. He is the Word. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, the Bible says, Lo, I come in a volume of a book to do thy will, O God. I'm talking about the Bible that you and, I, you and I have. And if you have Bibles in your home, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus said, I come in a volume of a book to do thy will, O God. The Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah, if you're not a Christian this morning, 
You're going to miss heaven. Everybody's going to die. Jesus promises to come back. And you're going to miss heaven if you don't do what the Bible says. Because the Bible is God speaking. And God through His Word will tell you and me what we need to do to become a Christian. Yes, if you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 28 and starting with verse 16. This is already after uh, Jesus was crucified, was buried in that tomb for three days, and according to the Scriptures, raised from the dead by the glory of God, by the power of God. And He was seen with His disciples 40 days before He ascended back into heaven. And in doing so, Judas had already taken his life, and there were 11 apostles or disciples, and Jesus commanded them to go to a mountain. In verse 16, the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, that word power means authority, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Only Jesus is the one that God gave this authority to. He didn't give this authority to any apostles. He didn't give this authority to any Christian preacher, any man, any president, any king, no one. Only to Jesus did he give that to and I'm telling you this morning, if you're ever going to become a Christian, a child of God, and be saved from your sins through the blood of Jesus, it's going to be because you have rejected man and listened to what Jesus had to say. Jesus told them, the 11 disciples, the first Christians who would start the church on the day of Pentecost, he told them, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, or make disciples, <clears throat> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If your preacher isn't telling you that, he's telling you nothing. You're tell he's telling you the opposite of what Jesus said. If your preachers and the elders in your church, if those who are doing the leading in the church that you're a part of, are not teaching you that, they're teaching you false teaching. It's not in the Word of God. God didn't speak them words, but He did speak those words in verse 19. And so the disciples began doing that. He told them to teach them to observe everything that I've commanded you. Every person that does what Jesus says, and Jesus said in Mark chapter 15, 16, verse 15 and 16, He says, Go unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. You notice what I said there? That's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now who are you going to listen to? Does your preachers, your elders, the leaders in the church that you're part of teach that Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved? If they do not, they're not teaching what Jesus taught. They're not teaching what the Bible taught is teaching. They're not speaking the words of God. Therefore, it's from man. And I'm telling you this morning, man will deceive you. Satan will deceive you into believing a lie. And you'll be lost. And you'll spend eternity in a lake of fire and never escape it. That's why it's so important that we understand that the Bible, even though men wrote it, they were moved by the Holy Spirit to do so. When we read the Bible, we're reading the divine message from heaven given by God. We could find over in uh, Acts chapter 2, starting with uh, verse 36. <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus said he would give the keys to the apostles to the kingdom of heaven. And <clears throat> they could use those keys to unlock the door to the kingdom of God, which is the church. Okay? I always want to say that because... Too many people think that the church 
and the kingdom of God are different things. Some people that even in the Lord's church because of lack of understanding think that I'll never be in the kingdom of God unless I'm faithful unto the Lord. And when I die and I stand before Him and then He tells me enter in. I'm telling you this morning if you've repented of your sins as Peter told them on the day of Pentecost and have been baptized, had your sins washed away and have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have entered the kingdom of God, which is the church. In Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 36, Peter said to those Jews on the day of Pentecost, those same Jews, now remember in the Old Testament, the Jews were God's chosen people. And ever no other nationality was unclean. The Jews had no dealings with the Gentiles. But on the day of Pentecost, those Jews, one week Jesus was riding through Jerusalem on a colt, and they were praising him, saying, Hosanna to the King of the Most High. And a week later, they're standing outside Pilate's hall. Pilate was questioning Jesus. Are you the Son of God? And he could find no fault in Jesus. And he was going to let Jesus go free. But the Jews, God's chosen people, cried out and said, Crucify him! Let his blood be on us and on our children and on our children's children, and etc. Well, that's who the apostles were preaching to. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter got straight to the message, straight to the point. He didn't beat around the bush. He wasn't worried about if he made them mad. He wasn't worried about if he hurt their feelings. He wanted them to know the truth. And I'm telling you, sometimes we exchange the truth because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We don't want to make people angry. I tell you, it's time for the Lord's church to start talking to people in a way that they will be convinced of the truth. They will have the opportunity to know what God says. Jesus said, didn't it come to bring peace? But a sword. And this is the sword. And Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says that the Word of God is alive and it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it cuts. That's when, when the Word of God is taught and is preached and people are listening to it in such a way that it convicts them of their sin. You know, it don't do, do any good for me to tell you about your sin unless I'm bringing it from God's Word. Okay? I am no better than you, and you're no better than me. I'm no better than Mike, Mike Breidenbaugh, and he's no better than me. But when it comes to God's Word, whoever's doing the preaching and teaching, when it comes from God's Word, then it brings true repentance. It cuts the heart. It cuts into us. Sometimes it makes us angry. Sometimes it hurts our feelings. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God's intentions through the hurting of the feelings, through the making of the angry, He's trying to get through to you and me how to live a life that is pleasing to Him. That's trying to do. And on day of Pentecost, He told those Jews, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. He preached that message to them. You know, while Jesus was on the earth, they crucified Him for that. He said He was the Messiah, the anointed one, the Son of God, the one that God sent to save His people from their sins. They crucified Him for that. You know, a lot of times when the apostles went forth preaching that Jesus is the Son of the living God and this message came from heaven, they were too were put to death for that reason. But here on the day of Pentecost preaching to the Jews, 
Even though Peter knew that one day, like it did Stephen in Acts chapter 7, they stoned him to death for preaching the same message. Peter knew one day that that was going to happen to him. Even Jesus forewarned him back in Matthew chapter 10 that they would be brought for counselors and governors and kings for his sake and be tried and put in prison and put to death. And for all the time they live on this earth, this earth serving the Lord Jesus Christ, they had that on their mind. They knew that this, that which they preached, would cost them their life. When the apostles preached, my friend, it cut into the heart of people. It made them angry. It hurt their feelings to the point where they stood up and wanted to stop them from preaching. And they lost their lives for that. They were put to death. Put in prison, put to death for that. Yeah. And it shouldn't be no different today. Whether you're a Christian or not, I'm telling you, the preaching of God's Word, if it makes you angry, if it hurts your feelings, whatever the case may be, God's intention is to get through to you and me. Sin will deliver you and me to hell. But if we obey what the Word of God said, He will lead us from this life and into the next. That's what God is trying to get through to you and me. And that's what Peter told those Jews on day of Pentecost. You murdered the Savior. You are the one that slain him. But see, they had a different attitude now. Because the Holy Spirit was working, was he not? He was. The Holy Spirit was working. And they were convicted. They realized. How would you, how would you feel? How would you feel if you're part of a group and you really thought that that person was doing something wrong? And you punish that person and come later to find out that that person was innocent of that punishment. How would you feel? You'd feel bad, wouldn't you? What have I done? And I probably have done that. Chances are you have too. But that's what happened to Jesus. He did not deserve anything that happened to him. But he got it anyhow. And the Jews on the day of Pentecost finally come to realization that they whom they cried out, crucify him, was the one that God sent to save them. And they were cut to the heart, the Bible says. They were hurt. They were a basket case. And they cried. They didn't ask. They didn't go and say, Peter, what must I do? They cried it out. Men and brethren, what must we do? We killed the Savior. What must we do? Please tell us. And Peter and the apostles began to do just that. Told them just what they wanted to hear. How to be forgiven of that terrible sin. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. And there were a million plus people there in Jerusalem that day. And out of about a million plus, about 3,000 people gladly heard. Now I'm saying something this morning. You're God's child if you have been repented and been baptized. And if you're not a Christian this morning, God's speaking through His Word. You have the opportunity to know what God wants you to do to become a Christian. But you have to gladly hear. can't just hear it. You have to gladly hear. In other words, you have to be in a position to say, I want to hear what God says. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. <laughs> Do you know that in the denominational world today, and in people who do not even claim to be Christians. Do you know that um, people think that they can get to God in different ways? Some people think they can pray through. Some people think that they can uh, ask Jesus to come to their heart. 
Some people think that uh, you can have a preacher pound you in the head. Some people think that all I have to do is wait until I take my last breath. And I ask the Lord to forgive me. But I want you to know that the Apostle Peter and the Apostles on the day of Pentecost said, Repent and be baptized. And he said, Every one of you. He wasn't just talking about those people in Jerusalem that day. He was talking about mankind from the day the church began until Jesus comes back. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. And then he said, this is the purpose. This is the purpose. You can find the purpose in God's Word. Okay? You don't have to listen to what a man says. His Word spells it out. The purpose for baptism. It spells it out. How can you miss it? Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. It is when you're baptized into Jesus Christ is when God washes your sins away. Okay? Your sins don't get washed away any other way. I tell you, you can search the Scriptures from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 and you'll find no other way to have your sins washed away other than by the blood of Jesus. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus is called the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In the Old Testament, the high priest would kill the Lamb, take him to the Holy of Holies, uh, wipe the blood upon the mercy seat, and the Shekinah was there. That means that the presence of God was there. And God accepted that for an atonement for sin. For the priest first, okay? Not like the Catholic priests have today in the Father's but for their own sins, and then for the whole sins of the children of Israel. But it only rolled them back every year. It didn't completely wipe them away. So the high priest had to do it every year. Every year, over and over and over and over and over. Well, Jesus is our high priest, and he's in heaven, in the Holy of Holies, the real Holy of Holies, in the presence of God, the Father. And he is called the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. That Lamb was slain and his blood was wiped on the cross, the mercy seat. And atonement was made. Now, I want you to hear this. Atonement was made for those who were obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The opportunity was made for every man and woman. When Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood there, that didn't give no one salvation. You see, that's not all, that all there is to it. He also said that you have to repent and be baptized. Then God said he would wash away your sins. Man doesn't teach that. If you're part of a congregation, a preacher isn't teaching that. They're not teaching the Word of God. They're not teaching what the Bible says. And therefore, they're leading, leading you away from God. They're leading you to hell. Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. And, you see, God doesn't leave us alone now. Once He's called us out of our life of sin, you notice what I said there? Every man and woman is born, or ever will be born, except for Jesus, is in a life of sin. And I tell you, it's time. It's time for people to realize that we're not good people until God makes us good people. Okay? We're not good in the eyes of God until we do what He says. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the finest, outstanding citizen in America. You're not good in the eyes of God until He declares it. And that's what Peter was telling them. And when God calls a person out of the life of sin and to the life that he has to offer, he doesn't leave us alone. Okay? He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God 
however God does it, He gives you and me to dwell within this body. It says so. The Bible says so. Because this body, once you've been baptized into Jesus Christ, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the last two verses, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so God has given you and I His Spirit to dwell within us, to help us. Okay? We need to get away and quit listening to the false teaching that we're baptized into the Holy Spirit like the apostles did, and we have the power to heal the sick, cause the lame to walk again, the blind to see again. We do not have that. No man has that anymore. But we do have the complete written will of God. We have what God give us just enough. It's sufficient to help us get to heaven. That's what the Apostle Peter is preaching. In Acts 2.42, those that gladly heard were baptized, okay? They didn't say they went and knelt at the altar. It didn't say they asked Jesus to come in their heart. They didn't say the sinner's prayer. And they didn't do anything else. My friends, you can look at ways to get to God from A to Z and you'll never find them in the Bible. The only thing that you'll find in the Bible is what Peter said. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They that gladly received His word were baptized. Okay? Did just what the Bible says, what God told them to do through the mouth of the apostles. He told them what to do. And about 3,000 did it, did that. And the Bible says in Acts 2.42 that they, they continued. Now this is important. Are you a Christian this morning? Those early Christians did something. And we're to follow their example. The Bible says so. The apostles taught this. And Jesus in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 gave them the keys to the kingdom. No one else has them. Not me. I don't have them. Unless I go to the word of God. And on the day of Pentecost, they used those keys. Are you a Christian this morning? And those keys are repent and be baptized, have your sins washed away, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They follow the pattern that Jesus taught the apostles. And the Bible says in Acts 2.42 that they continue steadfastly in J. Jones' doctrine. Jerry Fall in the Wells doctrine. No. The Apostles' doctrine. The Apostles' doctrine. Peter is an apostle. And there were 12 of them. And Paul was an apostle too. The early church continued in their doctrine because their doctrine came straight from the mouth of Jesus. Okay? They continued, or they devoted themselves. Are you a Christian this morning? The Bible here is telling us what the other Christians did. And we should continue doing what they did. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And if you're a Christian this morning, you should be devoting yourself to the apostles' doctrine. When Jesus comes back, now listen, friends. When Jesus comes back, and he is, he promised he was, the only ones that are going to go back with him to heaven is those who continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Now that's pretty strict, isn't it? It's the only way. Jesus said in John's account of the gospel in chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but through me. You don't get to the Father except you go through Jesus. And He is the Word. 
Are you continuing steadfast in the apostles' doctrine? Are you devoting yourself to the study of God's word? Do you want to be the man, the woman that God wants you to be? That cannot happen if you're not studying God's word. Tom makes a statement. He doesn't believe, and I agree. He doesn't believe anyone's going to heaven that is not studying the word. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. If you don't know what his commands are, how can you love him? You can't. The study of God's word. 2 Peter 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God. You want God to prove you? The way that can happen is if you study and show yourself approved unto him. Are you a Christian this morning? Are you continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine? You see, the preaching of God's word will either draw you closer to him. Now I want you to listen to me and I'm going to close. I need everybody listening to me. The preaching of God's word, the truth, will either lead you closer to Christ or drive you farther away. What's it doing for you this morning? This morning, to be a Christian, the Bible says you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. By believing that message, one repents of their sins. Repentance is a change of mind and conduct toward the way that you're living and you turn towards God. The Bible says one must be baptized by immersion to have your sins washed away and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not to help you speak in tongues and do miracles, but to help you live a faithful life unto Jesus and His Word unto the end. If you are a Christian this morning, and you're not devoting yourself to the apostles' doctrine through the study of God's Word, that's sin. Okay? The man that murders is sin. The man that is a drunkard is sin. The man that commits adultery is sin. The person, the Christian, that does not study God's Word is in sin. And therefore... The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if you are true, if you are serious about God and going to heaven, the Bible says you need to repent of that sin and turn away from it and turn back to God. In 1 John 1, 9, the Bible says if we will confess our sins to Jesus, He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, that's what the power of God can do through His Word. Where are you at this morning? You need to become a Christian, repent and be baptized. If you are a Christian, do you need to repent? Turn away from that sin and turn back to God? God's giving you that opportunity right now. Yeah.